Hello, welcome to this DCS F16 tutorial. In this video, I will cover HUD symbologies, taxi, takeoff, and landing. To begin, if you want to taxi out of your hangar, ensure nose wheel steering is on. And my preferred method is to always be in my medium range missile mode. If you don't like that, you can always be in a navigation mode. So if you followed our tutorial uh, for startup, you can cycle to air to ground mode, shown here with CCIP, and then press your air to ground button to turn off air to ground mode. At this point, you are in nav. I personally prefer just to use my medium range missile mode to navigate, so I'm going to turn air to ground back on and cycle back to medium range missile. Alrighty, I'll start taxiing, nice and easy. This aircraft has a very small wheelbase, so it's very easy to roll it. So I'm going to go nice and easy, give some gentle rudder, turn on my controls indicator. Never too, too much, you can see my rudder down there. Hit my brakes if I'm speeding up, and we'll turn. And at this point, I'll start talking about some HUD symbology as I taxi over to the runway. In the lower right, as you've seen during our startup tutorial, this shows the mode we are in. So if we cycle between the modes with our cycle button, it will show our air to ground, dogfight, or medium range missile mode. In medium range missile mode, we have our aircraft speed on the left here on the HUD and also on the left here in our helmet. Below the aircraft speed in knots, we have the Mach number down here And our current G's here. Our current G's are also displayed in our helmet above our speed. On the bottom of our helmet display, we have our compass tape showing where we are looking, the bottom numbers updating. Or our compass tape in medium range missile mode is at the top here showing the direction our plane is pointing. This ladder represents the inclination of the plane. Dashed means negative, negative 5, negative 10, and so on, degrees below the horizon. This solid line indicates the horizon. And there will also be a ladder going above the horizon that will be solid instead of dashed that says 5, 10, 15, and so on. On the right hand side, we have our altitude, also our altitude in our helmet on the right. In the center, we have our velocity vector. It will become more clear when we're in the air, and also a positional cross at the top. That will become relevant during takeoff. So to take off, I will come to a full stop. Straighten out a little bit. I will go to full burner. Release my brakes when my plane overtakes them, and then speed up, keeping it straight along the runway. When my speed hits about 175, I'm going to pull back on the stick to get this cross at 10 degrees above the horizon. So instead of 10 degrees below with the dotted line, there will be a solid line with 10 above the horizon, and that's what I will put this cross to. Let's go ahead and try that now. 
Once I am airborne, I will put my gear up. There are no flaps to worry about, as they are all automatic. My speed is increasing. One seventy five. I'm going to pull the cross up to the ten degree position, bring it back onto it, and my plane is lifting off. Gear up. As your gear comes up, you no longer have to worry about this cross holding it on the 10 degree position. You can now fly by your velocity vector. The velocity vector tells you where your plane is flying. Below our altitude is a box with an R that shows our radar altimeter. I'm going to come out of burner. Then I'll fly over and come in for a landing. I will cover navigation and all of that in a later video. As we're flying along, let's go ahead and change the mode and cover some of the symbologies in those modes. Down here, I forgot to mention, is the bank of our aircraft. You can see that changing. Alright, so I will cycle the mode. In the air to ground mode, it is all extremely similar. Not seeing anything really new here. And in dogfight, the symbology changes drastically. This represents the horizon, this cup. This represents a gun funnel, which I'll cover more in an air-to-air -air tutorial. And nothing really new or special there. All right, back to medium range missile. Down here, this will become relevant during navigation. So I will cover that in a later video. Same with this circle with the line, that will be relevant during navigation. The beeping you just heard was in marker for the airport. It means we were crossing a threshold. If that um, noise annoys you, you can turn down this ILS volume knob here. Not all the way off, but just down, and then the beeping won't be as loud. Going back to our map tutorial, I'll find out where that airport is, since I'm not utilizing any of the navigation features yet. All right, 264 for 20. So I'll turn 264 on that compass tape. Alright, I'm going to start looking for the airport. There it is. So I'll turn and line myself up with it. One thing to note for our landings, we do not want to be utilizing full speed brake. If we do, it will kill our lift and will drop out of the air like a rock. So for our speed brake, we're going to hold the extend for a one and a half count. I'll demonstrate that here for my speed brake extend. One and done. I'll put them back in and do that again. One and. One and. So that's about all we need our speed brakes out for our landings. If you have them out completely, your plane will fall out of the sky when you're getting close to the runway. One and. Good. So I'll fly in towards the approach. What we want to do is we want to keep this negative 10 about on the end of the runway here. When they're both in line, we will move our velocity vector in line with the negative 10 and the end of the runway. 
below 300 knots, I will drop my gear, and the goal is to come in for landing uh, no slower than 160. You can come in a bit faster as you're learning, and that'll make it harder to stall, and therefore make your landings a bit easier. Um, but you generally don't want to go below 160, 165. I'm a little fast even on my thralls at idle, so I'll put my speed brake completely out. I just need to remember that before I come in for my final approach to put it completely in and only extend it out a one and a half count. All right, I'll line up a bit more to the left. Keeping that negative 10 in line with the end of the runway. I'll correct more as I get closer. All right, the negative 10 is where I want to touch down. So I'll move my velocity vector to be in line with that negative 10. And I'll just hold it there. Dropping speed as I go, nice and easy. When I start getting too slow, speed brakes all the way in. Hold it out the one and a half. And now it's just throttle modulation to make sure you come in nice and easy. Right before I touch the end of the runway, hit the ground, I'm going to move my velocity vector from where my negative 10 is to the opposite end of the runway. I'll come in, and as I do the flare, moving my velocity vector to the opposite end of the runway, I might give her a little bit of throttle, feather it in, just so it's a nice, easy touchdown. I'm a little fast here, so I'll pop my speed brake. I just need to remember to put it back in so I don't drop out of the sky. Put it back out the one and a half. I'm about 190 here. Shouldn't matter too much. This plane likes to move fast. All right, I'm going to move my velocity vector to the opposite end of the runway, nice and easy. Give her a little bit of throttle. Throttle to idle, speed brake all the way out. Stick all the way back, full brakes. So you saw I came in a little fast, so I ended up using a lot more of the runway. I'll go back and I'll do that again, but instead of utilizing the negative 10, I'll utilize the negative 5 line. You can experiment with different areas between the two. There's generally a sweet spot kind of in between them, but that's a little harder to gauge as you're learning. So negative 5 will be easier. Negative 10 will put you closer to their stall. All right, let's get back in the air. Full brakes, full burner. One seventy-five. I'm going to move the cross to the positive ten position. Nice and easy. Hold it there. Gear up. All right. At this point. I have lift, I'm flying, gears up, I'm going to pay attention to my velocity vector and not the cross. Fly up and then come back in for another landing, utilizing the negative 5 instead of the negative 10. Keep in mind the sweet spot is somewhere about here. I'll jettison my fuel tank. That extra weight certainly didn't help on the lander. I jettison my fuel tank by just pressing my emergency stores jettison button here. Jettisons everything except for your air to air weapons. So if you had air to ground munitions or fuel tanks, it would jettison all of those.
as you're learning, these straight-in approaches are nice and convenient. But as you get more experienced, you'll come in, do a pattern, and then turn base, and then turn in for your final. Alright, I'll come in. I'll get the negative 5 on the end of the runway so you can see the difference. Gear is down, speed break out. One thing to note when you do put down your gear, the flight characteristics of your aircraft change because the flight control system is trying to give you a bit uh, more leeway in your landing control. So it'll take more input to do the same maneuvers as you were trying to do when your gear was up. If you need, an indicator that your speed brake is out is located right here. That shows it is out. That shows it is closed. All right, the negative five is on the end of the runway. I'll keep my velocity vector lined up. Speed break out one and a half. Gear is down, three in the green, shows all three wheels are down. Keep in mind, fast isn't necessarily bad. Um, but 160 is the absolute slowest you want to go, or else you'll fall out of the sky. As I approach the end of the runway, I'm going to move my velocity vector to the opposite end. All right, throttle's coming back. Speed brake is coming out completely. I'm going to hold my nose up as my speed brake is out, give my some extra drag. I'm going to press my wheel brakes, let the nose come down, and keep the stick held all the way back with my speed brake all the way out. My nose wheel steering does not come on, so I need to manually turn that on. And I'll straighten out. In a nice, easy landing. So your landing cue is essentially going to be between the negative 5 and negative 10. They're both going to be extremes. Sweet spot is generally probably around 6 or 7. But like you saw, 5 is real nice and easy for as you're learning. And then you can experiment. Same negative 5 trick utilized in our 18 tutorial and will be shown in the A10 tutorials. There's no nose wheel steering high, so just get a feel for utilizing your rudders to turn. After your mission, if you go to rearm and refuel, you need to make sure that you jettison your fuel tanks before you rearm. Uh, there's a high probability if you rearm with a fuel tank still on your plane, um, it will not fill up completely and you'll be uh, a little lower on fuel than you should be. But when you go to rearm and fill up your internal fuel reservoir, you need to come down to this left hand side. And there's an air refuel switch. You need to move that to the open position. With that in the open position, you are opening your aerial refueling port at the top. But more importantly, that is depressurizing your fuel tanks. At this point, you can go ahead and refuel your plane. If you left that closed when you are refueling your plane, you might not get all the fuel that you should because they're tank is pressurized and the fuel can't get in. Opening that up allows the fuel to completely fill the internal reservoirs. Once your refueling is done, just remember to close that switch. So say my refueling had just finished, I'll come back down, close the air refuel switch. When the switch is open, 
you will see above your nose wheel steering indication, RDY. The plane thinks you're trying to aerial refuel and it's ready. When it's closed, the RDY will go away. All right, that covers basic takeoff, uh, landing, and taxiing. The next tutorial will cover navigation. Thanks for watching.